This video is from Lesson 5.3 from the fifth grade math curriculum on estimating quotients. I'm just going to take you through a few problems to give you an idea on how to do it. Okay, so you have a decimal divided by a number. First thing you're going to do is look at your divisor. If it's two digits, we're going to go ahead and round it to the nearest 10. So 48 will round up to 50. Copy down our division sign. And then this entire number we're going to round. I like to pretend that the decimal is not there and think of this as just the number 209. So 209 is going to round down to 200. The reason I'm using 200 is because if I look at the first two digits here, I think of it as a 20, and my first digit here is a five. And I said that 20 and five are compatible because I can divide 20 divided by 5 evenly with no remainder. So those are compatible numbers. Okay, so now that leaves me with 200 divided by 50 because I'm looking for an estimate so it doesn't have to be exact. All right, so I can see I have an extra zero on either side. So I can actually eliminate that to make my life easier because they're going to cancel each other out here. All right, so this leaves me with 20 divided by 5. And that's a basic fact, 20 divided by five is four. So my final answer is four. All right, let's try another one. 256 and 1 tenth divided by 82. So step one, we're gonna take our 82, round it to the nearest 10, which gives us 80. Copy down our division sign, and then we're gonna round this whole thing to a new number. All right, so I'm gonna underline my first two digits 25 and my first digit here is an 8. So now I need to ask myself, what is a number close to 25 that will divide evenly with 8? And if I go down, I get the number 24, which does divide evenly with 8. So that's going to change to a 24, and that 6 will become a 0. Okay, so basically I rounded 256 down to 240. All right, so again, let's eliminate our extra zeros that we don't need. And 24 divided by 8 is 3. So that is our final answer. So 256 and 1 tenth divided by 82 is about 3. Okay, let's try a couple more. All right, so I have a single digit here, so I'm not going to round it to the nearest 10. When you have a single digit, you just leave it as the same single digit. Okay, copy down our division sign. And again, we're going to round this entire thing down, focusing on the first two digits. Okay, so the first two digits are 73. So I'm going to ask myself, what number close to 73 can I divide evenly with 9? And if you remember your basic facts, you should know that 72 divides evenly. So I'm going to change that to a 72, and that 7 will become a 0, making my new number 720. All right, so again, I do not see a 0 on each side, so I can't eliminate this one, okay? So what instead we're going to do is 72 divided by 9, which is 8, Okay, and then this zero, since there's only one, it's, I like to tell my students it's like the odd one out. So we're gonna have to take it and move it over here into our quotient. Okay, so our final answer here is 80. And you can check it because 80 times nine is 720. All right, one last example. So we have two and eight tenths divided by six. So again, single digit, it's gonna stay a six. Now, what I'm gonna do here, I have two and eight tenths, but I'm just gonna think of this as the number 28. Whole numbers are a lot easier to work with, and I'm just gonna imagine that it is the whole number 28 for a moment. Okay, so what is a number close to 28 that would divide evenly with six? So if I go up to 29, 30, I found a number, 30 works. So when I write this down, I'm gonna write it as my 30, I'm just going to bring that decimal point down so I don't forget that it's actually there. Okay. So now, what is 30? Again, remember, pretend it's a whole number. 30 divided by 6 is 5. That's a basic fact. But if you leave your answer as the whole number 5, it would be incorrect because 5 times 6 is 30, not 3. And this is actually a 3. So what you need to remember is that this needs to be less than a whole number. So 3 2 and 8 tenths divided by 6 is actually close to 5 tenths. So you have to bring the decimal back into your answer. And that's it. 
I hope this was helpful.